So hello everyone and welcome to our webinar on the Farming Equipment and Technology Fund round one and thank you for joining us. So my name is Jessica Allsop and I'm joined today by Sally Blowy and we're both from the Stags Professional Services team. So today we're going to tell you a little bit more about the grant, including what you can apply for, the process, and then open it up to some questions at the end. If you do have any questions, hopefully you can see the chat box in the window below. And so if you pop your question in there, and we'll try and go through as many as we can at the end. But if we don't get to them, we will follow them up with an email later on. So hopefully we'll keep this nice and brief, but we should be no longer than half an hour. Okay, so the Farming Equipment and Technology Fund, the aim is to support investment in equipment and technology to improve agricultural productivity, animal health and welfare, and air and water quality, as well as encouraging the sustainable use of pesticide and management of woodlands. The format similar to the previous small grant scheme, however, there are a few key differences bullet pointed here. So the minimum grant has reduced to £2,000 to allow small farmers the opportunity to apply as feedback from the previous scheme was that the minimum £3,500 was prohibitive to many. The maximum grant has also increased to £25,000 and this is mainly to allow higher value forestry equipment to be included. You can apply for £50,000 over the duration of the scheme which is anticipated to be £25,000 in each round maximum and this is not linked to previous totals claimed under the small grant scheme. Contractors have been added to the list of eligible applicants this time as it will felt, it's felt it will benefit more farmers. DEFRA will review how well this has worked after round one and there are an additional 38 items on the list of items which include 10 forestry and 8 horticultural items. So how and who can apply? So the scheme is open to farmers, horticulturalists and forestry owners in England. And this year, one of the most exciting things is that contractors are also eligible to apply to the scheme this year, which previously they weren't able to, providing that they have a registered business in England. So tenants are also able to apply under this scheme. Um, however, depending on what equipment or item you are looking to apply for, it might be worth just running it past your landlord. But obviously that will be on a case by case basis. So if you do have a question on that, please feel free to get in touch with us. Um, one of the things that has stayed the same is that the non-departmental public bodies such as local authorities and any of the crown bodies are ineligible to apply for the grant. And then how much funding can you apply for? The most exciting bit. So um, this year, the handbook specifies a contribution towards each item as opposed to a percentage, which the RPA have worked out with AHDB and it's based on 40% of the standard purchase costs. So that means it will be the same for everybody, regardless of how much you purchase the items for. The remaining costs must also come from private funds and only brand new equipment will be able to qualify for the items. So we're going to run through some examples of the equipment that you can purchase under the various headings that the RPA have sorted them into. So for livestock handling and weighing, the main items are the mobile cattle handling system with a fixed contribution of £4,456. There's also a mobile sheep handling system at £3,100 and new for this year is the EID panel reader at 620 for cattle and £532 for sheep. Um, in addition, new for this round are weigh bars or a platform for animals less than 300 kilos. Other livestock equipment includes cameras for monitoring livestock at £132 and badger proof feed troughs at £101 per trough. New for this year is the electric fencing package at £341 alongside a mobile sheet dip and a chemical free disinfection system for dairy farms. Among the forestry items are tree shears for small diameter trees, 300 millimeter diameter shears are £3,219 and 650 millimeters is £15,940. A timber winch is 
contribution of £3,400 and there are 10 new forestry items in total. Under resource management, a robotic slurry pusher or collector at £5,400 and a trailing shoe slurry system at six metres for £9,834. New for this year are rainwater harvesting tanks and slurry separators, a dribble bar with 10 metres working width and a trailing shoe slurry system over eight metres, which is a contribution of £10,688. So within the general category, um, we've put some of the popular items here on the slide, um, which includes a grassland sward lifter with a contribution of £2,804 and a digital weather station, of which the comp contribution of £814. The new items within this category for this year include a central tyre inflation system with a contribution of £2,413, um, which is pictured on the slide. These have to be systems that can be retrospectively sort of added to equipment as opposed to built in. And the new items also include a biological control applicator and crop storage sensors. So within the precision and analysis category, we have um, a number of new items within here, which include the six meter direct drill. In the previous scheme, the three metre direct drill was included, but it's been included to increase that to six metres, and that's a contribution of £25,000. And the other new item included this year is the re real-time inline forage crop analysis, which again is pictured here. So the final category is horticulture. There were eight new items added to the horticulture category this year. So these included the electronic tray filling machine, the electronic row seeder, a five row seeder, paper pot transplanter, an in row weeder for 1.8 meters and inter row three meters and six meters. And finally on the screen, you can see is a salad leaf harvester. So before applying, you need to make sure your details are up to date on the Rural Payments Agency service. So checking that your email address is correct, as that's the way the grants will contact you. So they'll email you to confirm submission and again with a grant offer. And also, if you're using an agent to apply on your behalf, make sure that they have the appropriate permission levels uh, to ensure they can submit for you. Uh, this is shown on screen, so it should be make legal changes. And then when you apply, it's good to have the sort of following list in order so that when you sit down to the online portal, you can make the application as easy as possible. Uh, so you'll need, for example, your SBI number, your email address as registered with the RPA, your VAT number if you are VAT registered, the number of hectares of land linked to your SBI, livestock numbers if you own any and the number of people you employ this information will help the rpa when scoring applications you then fill in the items you want to apply for ensuring you meet the two thousand pound grant minimum and submit the deadline for round one is the 7th of january at midday so do bear this in mind So scoring and checking the application. It is worth noting that the scheme is competitive and the applications will be assessed against the following criteria, which are whether the item in, uh, improves productivity on the farm, animal health and welfare, and thirdly, environmental benefits, including biodiversity. So following the application deadline of the 7th of January 2022, the RPA are expecting to issue agreement offers or let people know if they've been unsuccessful within three to four weeks. So this is likely to be the end of February or early March 2022. So how to claim the grant? So you can only buy your items once you've received your agreement offer. Purchasing them before you've received your offer will invalidate your application and claim. So it's important not to buy them before you've had that offer. However, we all know from the past 12 to 18 months that there have been issues with the supply chain and the availability of items. So the RPA have recognised this. If you are experiencing any issues with the supply of items, then please flag it with the RPA sooner rather than later. 
because if there are widespread issues in relation to a particular item, they may extend that September deadline for claiming. So when you're ready to submit your claim, you'll need some evidence to go alongside it. Uh, when you've received the agreement offer in that email, there'll be a claim template to be completed once the item's been purchased and delivered. And then alongside that, you'll need to submit copies of invoices which are addressed to the same individual or business applying for the grant and describe the individual items ideally with the farming equipment and technology fund code to make them easily identifiable to the RPA. You'll also need to include payment evidence so copies of bank statements showing that invoices have been paid in full by the business. This can include screenshots but screenshots must show the bank's name and logo the account holder's name and account details, the transaction date type and amount to be accepted. You also need to provide photographic evidence of the item in situ and there are examples of good and bad photographs in the handbook. Evidence of the CE or UCA marking and serial number of each item also needs to be shown and this can either be a photo of this on the item or a scanned image of the certificate from the operating manual. Evidence should be submitted to the RPA by email where possible by the 30th of September 2022 deadline and they'll aim to pay a claim as soon as possible, in most cases within 30 working days of receipt of a valid claim. So the small print, um, it is quite dull but it is very important so I'll run through it quite quickly. Um, the RPA have made it very clear that all items purchased must be brand new, which means you can't purchase second hand or X demo or anything that you've built yourself. And it also must include the CE or UKC, UKCA mark, as Sally's just mentioned, which I've popped on the screen here so you know what you're looking for. Another important condition to be aware of is that once purchased, you must maintain and keep the item on the site that you applied for it on for at least five years. If you decide to sell or dispose of the item within those first five years, your payment may be recovered on a pro rata basis. So a couple of tips that we've got for you that will hopefully make the process as simple and pain free as possible. Um, we'd recommend to speak to your supplier as early as possible to let them know if you are intending on purchasing an item. This is so that you can discuss whether you might be able to agree to a refundable deposit. And it's also worth discussing with them the invoice evidence requirements so that you're prepared and in the best position possible when it comes to making a claim to avoid any delays in payment. Our second top tip for you is that the RPA are aware of supply issues that we have experienced recently. So if you are having issues, as we said earlier, they may extend the deadline if there are widespread issues on a certain item, but equally, if there is a particular issue that you're having, then they will review it on a case by case basis. Also on this point, we would say that if you are unsure about applying for a certain item and might change your mind later on down the line, this might invalidate your whole claim. So if you're not sure about it now, it might be worth waiting until the second round, which we think will be next year, uh, as we don't want you to invalidate your whole application and the things you are definitely looking to apply for. So that was a quick run through of the grant, which hopefully answered a few questions. And if you'd be interested in applying or want to discuss a possible application, then the contact details for your local professionals are on the screen now. Um, Sally, myself covering West Devon and Cornwall, Jess, Mid Devon and North Devon, and Guy Wilson in Somerset, Dorset and East Devon, and Claire Campbell in South Devon. Um, so feel free to get in touch with any of us to help you out and thank you very much for listening. Brilliant, so that in concludes the presentation part of the sort of webinar and um, we've now got some time for questions if anyone had any questions following that you can submit them via the chat button which should be visible at the bottom of your screen um, if you want to type it in we have had a few questions submitted prior so we'll start with those and the first question which I'll put to Jess is I applied for the small grant scheme previously and will that limit what I can apply for now 
Um, thanks, Annie. So that's a really good question. Um, so there is this new £50,000 limit. So in answer to the question, it's no. So this is a new pot of money entirely separate from the old scheme. So the maximum you can apply for in round one is £25,000 worth of grant funding. And then in grant round two, which will probably be next year, you can apply for another £25,000 worth of funding. So plenty of money to go around. Um, so let's have a look at a, another question, which you might be able to answer here, Sally. Um, if somebody doesn't have an SBI, can they still apply for the grant? Thank you, Jess. Uh, so yes, you can. Uh, it might be the case for any contractors this year that you aren't currently registered with the RPA if you don't claim any sort of basic payment or have any stewardship agreements currently. Um, it's fairly easy to register with them. So you can either go through gov.verify, which is the sort of website portal, and register yourself with two if you've got two versions of photographic ID, um, that should only take 15 minutes and then you can go through to the rural payments and set up a new business. Once you've got that SBI, you can carry on and apply for the grant as anyone that's already registered. Um, so it shouldn't really take you any longer um, and you don't need to have any land linked to your SBI either. Uh, so then let's see, next question, Jess. Um, are the items you went through the only items you can apply for? Uh, so that is a great question. Um, and the answer is no. So there's 120 items on the list in total. The ones that we went through here today are just sort of some headline and the most popular items that we've seen people apply for. So like Sally said earlier, there's 38 new items added to the list this year. Um, but there is a full list of 120 items broken down into each category. So hopefully there's something out there for everybody. Um, just in addition to this point, I'd say uh, whilst there is a lot out there, there's also quite uh, tight specifications around each item. Um, so I won't bore you by going through them in detail, but uh, just as an example, um, one of the most popular items last year was the mobile cattle crush. And within that, there's 10 different things that your crush must um, comply with to be eligible. So don't let it put you off at all because your supplier, I'm sure, will be totally used to dealing with um, the requirements of these grants. Um, but it's just worth checking. Uh, sooner rather than later before you put an order in. Um, so here's a good one for you Sally being based uh, over in Cornwall. Um, do applicants still get a higher payment rate as they did in the previous scheme? Ah, thank you, Jess. So yeah, under the small grant scheme, the Cornwall, anyone with a Cornwall postcode could get 50% funding, whereas the rest of the country was 40% funding. Uh, but they've now taken that out. Um, so whether you're in Cornwall, Devon, Dorset or Somerset, you'll get the contribution which is named in the manual. So it used to say 40%, it now just says a fixed amount, sort of as we went through in those slides against each item. Uh, so no benefit for the Cornish amongst you. And then let's see, just uh, I think we've got time for one final couple more questions. Um, so Jess, what about if the item I want's not included in the list, is there an opportunity to suggest any additional items? Yes, that is um, uh, an interesting question. And one of the things the RPA has been really good at um, this year is listening to the feedback from the previous scheme. So like we said earlier, there's a whole 38 new items, which was um, you sort of developed through the feedback from the previous scheme. So sadly, if there's something on the list that you want to apply for this year, um, if it's not on the list now, you can't apply for it. But the RPA are still taking feedback and wanting to develop the schemes to be as useful as possible. Um, so they're listening to um, your local groups, such as the CLA or the NFU. Um, and it might be worth mentioning that STAGs are an affiliated rural surveying NFU um, um, company. So if you did want us to put you in touch with your local representative, please do get in touch. We can send you to your county advisor. But it's definitely worth flagging because um, it's really positive to see that they're developing the schemes, um, listening to farmers feedback, you know, contractors are invited to apply for it this year. Um, so if you've got some good ideas that you think other people might benefit from, please do say because they will listen she says. Um, Okie dokie. <laughs> so um, if we just uh, do one more question, then uh, we um, could wrap up. So will there be um, another opportunity to apply if we're not sure what we want to apply for this year? 
Uh, yes, thank you, Jess. There will be. Um, so DEFRA have advised that there will be a round in 2022 as well, um, which should launch late 22. So we assume similar time to this year's application round. Um, so yeah, if you don't apply this time, there will be future opportunities. Like Jess said in the presentation, um, quite often you will have to purchase everything that you've applied for. So if you're not sure, there will be a future chance. That's great. So I think that's what we've got time for today. Um, I hope that's been really useful um, for everybody watching and listening. Um, we have been recording this webinar and we will be emailing it out to everybody that's attended. And I believe we'll also be putting it on the website. So um, you can go back over the slides and some of the detail um, in there. But if you do have any specific questions that weren't covered today or you'd like to raise with us individually, um, please don't hesitate to get in touch and we would really love to hear from you. And yeah, once again, thank you for taking the time to come and listen to us today. Thank you. Thank you.